Today I'm going to be talking about four posts that will help you sell and grow on Instagram. Um, one of the biggest frustrations that I see for um, kind of small business owners, artists, creatives like me who sell enamel pins and uh, other products is that you're frustrated with Instagram, growing your reach, not knowing what to post. The constant nature of it can be frustrating and overwhelming. So even me, I used to post three times a day. <laughs> for like a solid year and I had tons of content. I had tons of stuff that I was putting out and it was really good for my reach, but that can be a lot. And over the last year or so, I've had to consciously put this effort into getting back into that practice, getting back into being more consistent. And in doing that, I kind of have come up with these four foundations and I really think these four posts are really all you need in order to uh, sell your products on Instagram and to grow as well. The biggest thing here though is selling. So um, I am gonna show you exactly what I use to get back into uh, Instagram when I'm in a rut. So you won't have to think about it too much and you'll be able to kind of go back to these foundations when you're feeling frustrated and be like, oh yeah, duh, I can just do this. <laughs> All right, so let's get into it. Okay, the first one is really the most essential. It's a selling post. This is a post where you tell people exactly what you do and exactly where to find it. Because I feel like a lot of people can get into this rut of, oh, I need to make content. I'm going to talk about my favorite podcast. I'm going to talk about what inspires me. I'm going to talk about all this stuff. And then people forget what you actually do. You know, people will forget. They're like, oh, <laughs> I sell pins, <laughs> you know. So um, when you're feeling frustrated, you're not sure what to post, put up a post that sells your stuff. Talk about something that you make and uh, make it very purposeful. So selling is what you're going to be doing a majority of the time. So I don't want you to feel bad about that. If you're feeling frustrated with selling, you don't like it. It makes you feel icky. You don't like to put too many selling posts up. Then I suggest you check out this video because it's how about how to not feel salesy when you're trying to sell. It will really help you get over some mindset blocks that I think will make it a lot easier for you to be more comfortable in that selling space. So yes, number one, sell your stuff. Okay, the second kind of post is one that will build your brand. This is one that encourages engagement. So this is one that solicits those likes, those comments, those shares, um, things like that. And these are ones that let people get to know you and then you get to know them. So these are the ones where people, you know that whole no like trust factor that um, is, it's really important in the business world, you know? So people know who you are and what you do from your selling post. They know that you sell pens and now they're at the like section. So they're getting to know you, they're getting to um, kind of see who you are behind the brand and get more invested in you and then that makes them want to support you because when they see someone who is uh, like has a lot in common with them then they want to support you. I know I do the same thing with artists when I start following new artists and I find out they like the same things that I do. They have the same viewpoints on stuff and um, I love that. So I want to support that and I want to support them. So these are the type of posts that get that engagement up and let you get to know your audience and there's more of a back and forth. The third type of post you want to do is grow your reach, obviously. That's what everybody wants. <laughs> um, but I think one of the best ways to do that is to create shareable content and content that shows social proof. So in social proof, this is showing people who have purchased your stuff. It's almost like a FOMO sort of thing, you know, so when people share their stuff to their or share your stuff to their stories, put that in your stories right away. Thank you. Gifts. Oh my God. Awesome. Send a, send a thank you directly to them, you know, and I've talked about that before, but you want to share that stuff because you're paying it forward to them, thanking them for purchasing from you. And that'll make them feel amazing that you gave them a shout out. Plus it shows all of your other audience. Look at this person that was super happy with their purchase. Don't you also want to be super happy with your purchase? 
and kind of in the same umbrella I feel like of sharing is also creating content with the purpose to share so things like quotes that people can relate to illustrations that people can relate to and then send to their stories really quickly but also like the sort of follow Friday-esque posts where you can take pictures of your pin with a bunch of other makers and then that makes it easy for those makers to share it to their audience as well. So I want you to think strategically and purposefully about sharing when you are uh, kind of going through your strategy and thinking about your posts. And the fourth type of post that is super important and really fun and probably the easiest way to just kind of get some content out there is keeping it current. So this is staying on top of like social holidays, retail holidays, um, little things that are going on that can keep you kind of in the conversation of pop culture in the moment. So I definitely suggest going on some websites and finding some silly holidays. Like I like to run a sale or a special or a call out on International Cat Day because I make a lot of cat pins. <laughs> um, same thing with the International Day of Pink. I like to have either a discount or I'll put like a free pink pin in with every order on that day, something like that. So um, definitely do that. And that's really easy because you can look at that at the beginning of the month and then mark off the you know silly holidays that you want to do the things that are applicable to your business and your style and your illustrations and products and stuff like that you know national coffee day if you have mug pins or you know there's like sci-fi day if you have alien pins you know stuff like that um, so you can go ahead and put those on your calendar and just have them ready to go and then fill in around that. I think that's really fun. So it's easy content for you. It keeps it fun for your um, audience. And yeah, I just think it's really great. It's a good conversation starter, especially. <laughs> All right, so those are the four types of posts that I think you should be using to help grow and sell more on Instagram. I think they're really important to look, you know, more intentionally at this high level stuff and then fill in from there. So if you're already using some of these strategies, let me know. If you had kind of an aha moment during this video and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I never thought of that. Let me know in the comments. I would love to chat about it. And um, I have a list of Instagram prompts that you can download. I have a link down below as well. And I also have a really fun course coming called Power Prompts. And uh, you can check the link below for that as well. So that helps you kind of uh, not have to think about what to post because I have all of the prompts you could possibly need in there for you. So it's kind of a copy paste, uh, super easy, really awesome resource for you if you find it really frustrating and hard to think of what to post. So you won't have to. So check out the links below and secret emoji. Give me a phone for Instagram. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.